Man, this is bullshit. God damn it. Uh, hang on a sec. Here, ladies and gents. Yeah. Uh, my head up here. Look a little bit more presentable here. Okay. Ah. 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 Slam Sonic here. This is Slam Sonic here. Look at that lump on my head. That's right. It's not a lump. I have. They haven't been abu abusing me. In the hospital, I've just got this ugly, fat, lump cyst on my head. I, I know it's gross. I gotta get fucking get rid of that thing somehow. But anyway, I'll try to set this over here. See if this works any better. I don't know if I like it. Do I like that angle? Sure, why not? that angle is much better. Okay. So, uh, hey, I'm wearing street clothes today. I don't know. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I don't like it one bit. I like this angle right here. This gives me more of a godlike presence. Everyone's looking up to me this way. You must look up to me. This is, by the way, this is a... Uh, uh, Oh, this is an old uh, Lenny Reifenstahl tactic. Where if you put the camera down low, where you have to look up at the person. Yeah, I guess I should put it down here. Um, so you have to look at me so I have like, a godlike presence. I am your cure. I am your. Uh, I don't know. It's just not why I work like that. Fuck that. Okay. Anyway, Lamb Sonic here. As you can see, um, I am. I am in bed today. Filming. Lamb Sonic here. And uh, I got a haircut. As you can see, which really exposes. Uh, I guess. It, I guess I didn't get around the lump. That lump. Man, I gotta do something with that lump. But. Um, what is that? Anyway, that's my alien implant right there. Um, that's where all of my uh, great ideas come from, my alien implant right there, that lump. Anyway, well, like I said, man, it's just an ugly, fat lump, and I hate it. I hate it. Anyway. Today's day, uh, day 31. Of my struggle, Mein Kampf, as Hitler liked to call it. I noticed I'm throwing in a lot of uh, a lot of Nazi references today. I think it's because I just uh, had my head shaved, so I got to have the whole skinhead thing going on right now. Uh, anyway, day 31. Um, yeah, a little upset. I, I already filmed an episode of Land Sonic here today, and uh, somehow in the upload process, I fucked it all up, and it's been lost to history. And it was just uh, just amazing. Uh, for one thing, yeah, my mom was actually in it. So my mom uh, played a uh, starring role. In that episode of Lamb Sonic Care, I wonder if it would be better lighting if I uh, if I turn that light out behind me. Let's see. I think it would. I don't like the light behind me. I don't like that. Oh yeah, it's much better. It's much better. Anyway, day 31. 
of my struggle, of my stay in the hospital, of my fight. My fight for survival. Um, this is Charles Lamson. Um, that's right. Uh, the creator of Lamsonicare. That's right. Um, created Lamsonicare all by myself. Um, anywho, uh, day 31. That's why I already made a whole thing, man. I was already up in my chair, and, and I was out in the hall filming it. I got all fucked up. So, hey, man, shit happens. So here I am, uh, day 31. Uh, a lot of shit, uh, a lot of shit to report, ladies and gentlemen. First off, um, my buddy from across the pond, TL, aka Karen McKenna, gave us a call last night along with uh, another one of my great internet buddies and program director of one of the greatest radio stations of all time. That's right, I'm talking about flagship radio. Uh, uh, Donovan Meter called. Donovan Meter and uh, Karen. Karen McKenna. Not Karen. I know you Americans. My American viewers are saying, Karen. No, I'm talking about Karen. Karen McKenna. Poor bastard. He's an Irishman living in London. So, he's not happy about it. But, anyway, they called last night, and uh, it was... It was fan fucking tastic to hear from him. And uh, if you guys are watching right now, I just want to... Alright, there's beeping going on uh, in my neighbor's area, my roommate's area. I don't know what's going on. I think he, uh, that's right, um, uh, what do they call that? God damn it, I hear it all the time. Uh, blue, uh, oh, ah! I just had a funny joke on the tip of my tongue, and I can't, I can't, can't remember it now. Uh, blue, 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 blue. Uh, Code blue. Code blue. Was that a code blue over there, guys? Okay, I guess not. Um, so, uh, anyway. There's a lot of code blues on this hospital. That'd be great. Yeah, there might even be one uh, during this clip. You never know. Uh, all the time, you know, we're hearing. Code blue, one room 132. Code blue, code blue. So, you know. I am around death 24-7 in this hospital. It's a struggle for survival, ladies and gentlemen. We got code blues going off left and right. Uh, anyway. Yeah, so... Karen, Donna, if you're watching this, thank you very much for uh, giving me a call last night. Really, uh was a morale booster. Really helped lift my spirits. But I was talking to them guys last night. I was, it was really weird. I got this visit back. Look, man, I got this one. This doctor, he was this, this fucking surgeon. He was supposed to be in charge of my uh, wound case. Check out this shirt. Look. Look at Anheuser-Busch. Making friends is our business. Right. Making friends is my business, ladies and gentlemen, because I care. Lamsana care. Okay, uh, so anyway, they call. It was a morale booster. I was really glad to hear from them. Thanks for calling, guys. Really meant a lot. And uh, it was fun, you know, just hearing what old TL is up to. And uh, he's trying to get some money together so he can come to the States and visit us uh, right here at the confluence of the mighty Mississippi and the majestic Missouri Rivers, St. Charles, Missouri, and St. Joseph's Hospital, Charles Lanson, 
day 31 of my stay in the hospital. Ugh. Saturday, April 26th, year of our Lord, 2014. Um, anyway, so I had to record this again because the first recording got all fucked up. And here's the, here, yeah, so here's what I have to record. These guys called last night. This, and I, and for what I knew was, I, I was leaving the hospital. Yeah, but that's only because this asshole, motherfucker, piece of shit, cock sucker, known as Dr. Parik. That's right, Dr. Parik. I'm calling you out, you piece of shit, cock sucker. What is this brown thing on my face? Hey, wrong side. What is that? Is that a mole? What is that? Oh. Oh, it's nothing to be afraid of. It's just skin cancer. It's just skin cancer, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing to be afraid of. Okay, uh, uh, so, anywho. Um, anyway, Dr. Parik. You are a worthless fucking piece of shit, you cocksucker. I hope you right now. Anyway, so Dr. Parikh. Let's talk, let's talk a little bit about Dr. Parikh, shall we? First off, I'd like to say, I hope your fucking practice crumbles. And I, I, anybody watching this, um, if, uh, yeah, if you know of a Dr. Parikh in St. Louis area, don't ever, ever go to see him. Motherfucker's a quack and a worthless piece of shit at that. Um, so, yeah, he comes into my room last night. He takes a look at my room. He says, Well, oh, you're ready to go home. Meanwhile, no one had said that to me whatsoever. I'm ready to go home. So, basically, because my infection's gone out, he's saying, I'm ready to go home. So, and, uh, meanwhile, I still have this fucking hole in my ass. You know? So, and believe me, I've gone through this before in the past. Okay, I feel uh, okay. Uh, a little bit, a little bit of back backstory. I've dealt with motherfuckers like this in the past. They're just fuckers that don't want to, you know, don't want to treat your fucking wound. I had a pressure sore on my ass literally for a year and a half one time because pieces of shit like Dr. Parikh didn't want to fucking treat it. They just didn't fucking give a shit. So basically, what they would do is, and, and they always say shit like, "Oh." Well, I'm going to try to put you on my list to see if maybe I can give you some fucking surgery down the road. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to put you on my list so then I can give you a skin flap or I can put a wound back. Meanwhile, they don't do shit. They just look at it. And then they send you home with a hole in your ass just waiting for it to get infected. So hopefully you'll fucking die and you won't be their fucking problem anymore. Um, or, you know, you'll end up deathly ill, um, in some other fucking hospital, and you'll end up being somebody else's fucking problem. These motherfuckers just don't give a shit, most of them. Okay? So, this is my tale. Um, uh-oh, my nurse is here. I think it's time for meds, man. Let's see here. Oh. Oh no, that's not my nurse. It's not a nurse. Okay, anyway. Um. So, a year and a half. Literally, had a pressure sore on my ass for a year and a half. So I had to mostly stay in bed for a fucking year and a half. Because none, nope. Everybody just refused to fucking close it up. Fucker kept getting infected, kept getting thrown in the hospital. They treat the infection, then kick me out with the hole in my ass. Meanwhile, just so I could just go home, it would, and it would get infected again, and I didn't end up in the fucking hospital again. And this went on for a year and a uh, fucking half. Finally, I ended up getting so fucking sick. I'm half dead, so just by accident, I ended up uh, I go into this hospital that's by my house, St. Joseph's, which is where I'm at right now. And this doctor, this fucking saint, Guy's a fucking saint, Doctor Shapiro. He like takes a look at it. and He's like, "This is bullshit." 
we're gonna we're gonna fix your infection. We're gonna treat your infection. Then we're gonna close that up so it doesn't get infected again. Then we're gonna send you home. With the skin flat. And I'm like, hey, cool. This is the first doctor any year in a fucking half that actually said he was gonna close the fucking wound up. So I couldn't hardly fucking believe it. So anyway, I come to the hospital this time. And uh, I would have gotten Dr. Shapiro this time, except he was on leave when I first came in. So they gave me this piece of shit cocksucker called Dr. Uh, Parikh. And, um, this guy just re re two weeks ago he's wanting to send me home. Meanwhile, I'm still on antibiotics. I got a hole in my fucking head. He's one of these cocksuckers that just don't care and they just don't want to fucking treat it if they don't fucking have to. Could give a shit less if I go home and get an infection and fucking die. Could give a shit less. Code blue. Code blue. Code blue. Oh, right. no, it's not a code blue. But, uh, so anyway, he comes to my room last night and goes, Well, hey, yeah, how'd you like to go home? And I go, Well, I'd love to go home as soon as possible. He's like, Well, hey, you can go home now. And I'm like, uh, okay. And he's like, yeah, oh, fine, I'll go till the nearest. And I was like, uh, okay. So yeah, man, he goes out there and tells the nurse. And even the nurses were like, what? What the fuck is he talking about? Like, like he's fucking crazy. And, uh, you know, so, by then, you know, I'm a little pissed off. Because, you know, I'm smarter and wiser now. I know how these jack-offs work. Because he basically says, ah, yeah, you'll go home, and then I'll treat it, uh, outpatient. Which is fucking bullshit, because you can't put a skin flap on fucking outpatient. That's bullshit right there. And number one, he says, oh yeah, I'll try to put you on my list. Whatever these, my, if he was really going to operate on it, he'd say, okay, you're on my list two weeks from now. But, so that's bullshit right there. Second piece of bullshit. He's going to treat it outpatient. You don't put a skin flap on fucking outpatient. Because when you put a skin flap on, you immediately you have to stay off that area for one fucking month. While the skin heals into the other skin, you know, to, uh, you know, to where it all becomes one big, huge, healthy piece of skin there. If you sit on it right away, the, s the new skin just sloughs right off, sloughs right off. And so I'm thinking, this guy's full of shit. So, uh, like, the wound care nurse comes in a after he's gone, and I tell her about it. And I talked to her about it earlier in the day, about what a piece of, sh piece of shit cocksucker uh, this uh, freak is. She's like, well, you, you want to change it to Dr. Shapiro? And I was like, well, let me talk to... Freak first and see what he has to say. So I talked to him once again. So he, uh, he was full of fucking shit. So she comes in to treat my wound. I tell her about it. And she's like, "Well, you know, you, you want to switch to Shapiro?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And she's like, and "It's like 7:30 at night. The guy's already at home. This is what a fucking saint this guy is." She calls him at home, tells him the story, and he says, "I'll be happy to do the surgery on Monday. To give put him a give him a skin flap on Monday." I'll cover that bitch up on Monday. Granted, I mean, the bad news is, you know, I'm not going home right away. You know, after he does that, I'm going to have to uh, lay in bed and stay off that area for a month. But, but he's going to close it up. Whereas the other guy wasn't even going to close it up. That son of a bitch was going to send me home with a fucking hole in my ass and he knowing full well the son of a bitch was just going to get infected again but he just didn't fucking give a shit and not only that since day one since I first met that guy he was a piece of shit cocksucker asshole nobody around here likes him he has a bad reputation all the fucking nurses hate him everyone hates him he's a piece of shit and Dr. Parikh I hope you and your family are watching this you suck you can suck the sweat off my testicles, you piece of shit cocksucker. Thank God for Dr. Shapiro. Once again. Once again. He is the only guy 
willing to actually do what needs to be fucking done. And not only that, the guy jumps right on it. She t t calls him on the phone. And right then and there. He says, yeah. I'll be, and not only does he say it, I'm, I'm going to do it on Monday. I'll be happy to do it on Monday. The guy's a fucking saint. So they're going to close this fucking thing up on Monday. Uh, granted, like I said, the bad part is it's going to be another month. But after that month, man, is over, it's going to be completely, totally fucking healed. I'll be able to sit on it, you know, I won't have to, you know, it won't, it won't have to be one hour a fucking day. I can sit on it all day again and, you know, and start living my wacky lifestyle all over again. That's right. Just abusing the shit out of my body. No, I'm just joking. Uh, I'm gonna try and make some changes. Probably won't happen, but I'll try. Yeah, anyway. So, uh, I just want to say thanks to, uh, Donna, and thanks, Karen, for giving me a call yesterday. Just, uh, you know, the struggle continues, ladies and gentlemen. The hustle continues. Lansonicare continues. And, uh, I'll keep you posted tomorrow if any further developments. But the big developments now, yeah, getting the surgery done on Monday. They're going to close up the ass wound with a skin flap. Got a haircut so you can see uh, my alien implant uh, a lot better now. Uh, that's right, the, uh, the aliens, uh, the Pleiadians are sending me messages right now through my implant telling me that it's uh, time to sign out because uh, they have uh, an important incoming message for me that I cannot share on my uh, YouTube clip. But uh, anyway, this is uh, Lamb Sonic here. Charles Lanson, signing out. <laughs>